Ladies and gentlemen, our next topic, the new right. Please welcome David Marcus and host of Human Events Daily, Jack Posobiec. Hello, Texas. Now let me get a let me let me just let's let's do a little audience poll, David. Do we want to? Do you guys want to hear about all the plans that we have for the new right? Are you ready for a new right? Are you ready for new ideas to actually take the fight to the front lines? Because that's where we live, and we're not stopping. That's what we're going to talk about. So let's. So let's start from there, right? Because we, we hear about the new right all the time, that this term gets, gets bandied about. It's a lot of different factions. It's a lot of different things. You know, briefly, what does it mean to you, that, that, those two words? So, so for me, when I hear the new right, I, I, I think the best way I could encapsulate it is if you think about the, the founding fathers of the new right. And I think for my, in my view, the two founding fathers of the new right are Andrew Breitbart and Rush Limbaugh. Can we get a round of applause for Andrew Breitbart and Rush yeah. Limbaugh? So, but, so that's, wait, that, that's, that's interesting because I think that when you look at the new right and all of the factions, there are really a core four issues that everybody agrees on. Right. We need a strong border. Yes. We can't have bad trade deals. Yes. We need energy independence. Yes. And we have to fight the culture war. Yes. Now on all of these, Breitbart and, and Rush were there and the GOP wasn't. Exactly. Right? The GOP exactly wanted right. the, the border deals with the Democrats. They love trade deals. I mean, my Precisely. God, there wasn't. There if, was... you, if you do not talk about the borders, immigration, and trade, the coalition will fall apart. It will completely fall apart. That is the center of it. And the outside piece, sort of almost the animating force, is fighting the culture wars against whether it be woke corporations, whether it be media, whether it be the Chamber of Commerce, whether it be everybody that Kerry Lake had to fight against a couple nights ago. I just got back from Maricopa County, and we all know about Maricopa County. But we put Maricopa County in their place, and we listen to the people, not the bureaucrats. But isn't, you know, isn't, isn't, isn't part of that culture war piece that Republicans were so afraid of being seen as big government, right? Everything had to be limited government. Right. And then we saw what DeSantis did this year with Disney. He smacked Mickey Mouse in the mouth. Yes. And <laughs> but, but, no, but no, no, wait, wait, unpack that for a second because for everyone, and, and we cheer it, but think about that. Th imagine a state relationship with a company between Florida and Disney and the amount of money that Disney has provided to that state, the amount of tourism, even the outside, you know, the secondary tertiary economic effects of Disney being in Orlando, right? This is one of the most powerful companies in the entire state of Florida. So from a perspective, it makes sense that the governor would not want to go up against them. And that's why you saw a series of governments or governors who refused to do this. They would work together and walk the line. DeSantis, Governor DeSantis, decided to be the one that said, you know what, it's too far. And these companies, when they step onto the political arena, when they decide to become politicized, now you're not just part of the, ec the economy of our yeah. area. Now you're trying to tell us how we should live, how our children should be raised, what we should teach in our schools. And that is not the job of corporate America. That's the job of the people and the representatives of the people. And, and I think... I, the the effect wound up going so far beyond Disney. I, I guarantee you, two years ago, had the Dobbs decision come down, overturning Roe v. Wade, every corporation in this country would have been tweeting about it. Of course. Hollywood and Major League Baseball would have been pulling events out of all the states. That, none of that happened this time. No. The silence was eerie. And the reason that those corporations were silent was because Ron DeSantis and all of you, quite frankly, have let them know that there is a price to pay if they interfere in the culture and the politics of the United States. And that's not going to change. No, you're, you're exactly right, because they can sense that the ground has shifted under their feet. And, you know, Klaus Schwab has got his great reset, and 
we, we, I just went over there, by the way, if, if you guys know, we were over in Davos, and uh, I was doing a hit for the War Room. Do we have any War Room fans, maybe? <laughs> one or two? Okay, I, I think I see one or two hands in the back. Yeah, a couple of guys have heard of it. And, and we're doing a hit for there, but then we're also doing a documentary for Turning Point USA, and Klaus Schwab sent his goons out to detain me, right, while I was doing a documentary on the Great Reset. And while I'm standing there with these World Economic Forum assigned police, uh, nine millimeters, guns drawn, and I'm sitting in the back of my head, I said, we are such a threat to you. We are such a threat to this agenda because they have the Great Reset, we have the Great Awakening. So let me, let me... And, and this is what you're saying because the WEF, W-E-F, this is corporate power. Yes. But let's, so, so let me, let, you know, I, I, I kind of describe the four things that I think we all have in common on the new right. I do think there's one area, and by the way, all four of those were core Trump issues. Yes. Trump was less clear in terms of foreign policy, right? Trump's foreign policy was very transactional. You never knew what he was going to do. There wasn't exactly a doctrine. So when it comes to Ukraine and it comes to those issues, you and I have been sort of on different sides of this. And whereas on those four issues, the new right arrived and voters were already there. Mm. Republican voters have been supportive of Ukraine, I think because it's against Russia, right? And, and Russia's traditionally been the enemy. Like, I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan. If the Dallas Cowboys play Satan, I'm, I'm rooting for Satan, you know? Um, and, and, I, don't make us sing he Fly, Eagles, Fly. He knew what would happen if he but, said it. Yes. He knew. <laughs> but, but listen, but I, but I do think that a lot of people are getting to the point where it's like, we can't spend $10 billion a month to protect 15 miles in the Donbass. And I, and I think that's, and look, I just got back from, we were in Odessa, we were in Lviv, we were in Mykolaiv, and, I, and I've seen it on the ground. And my question was, if we're sending over $60 billion of US money, where is it? Yes. Where's the $60 billion, Joe? What have you done with this? What percentage, and, and, and when you look at the laptop, and we were some of the first people to have that laptop, and I think that the American people want to support the people of Ukraine, but they, uh, they inherently know that there's something going on in between us supporting them and the money not going to where it needs to be. And that is where you get politicians, connected families, oligarchs, but the whole more, nine yards. But more, but more broadly, how do we, what is, the, what is the American foreign policy that on the one hand keeps us out of expensive entanglements, but on the other hand doesn't just hand geopolitical foes like Russia and China and Iran win after win after win? How, so how this do we is, balance this? So this is something that I've actually talked about, and I say this as a Navy officer, that it's, it's deterrence, right? Because if you have, strategic deterrence and credible deterrence. We just took out Zawahiri, maybe, right? You know, there's, there's some questions about, you know, was he taken out before, et cetera. But the idea is we can reach out, as we would say in the military, we can reach out and touch somebody right. without having to go on board with occupying countries and nation building and spending trillions of dollars in the Middle East instead of rebuilding Detroit and Chicago and getting our cities under control, doing something about crime here, that we can be effective on the world so, stage. So, I mean, but what does that, what does that look like? Way, does that look like deal. Trump? Does that look like Trump saying to Putin, if you invade Ukraine, I'm going to, I, there were reports that he said, bomb Mos Moscow. The he minarets, himself he was says, about the, uh, right? The, like he know, himself says that, that he put quite a threat out there. But that's his personality. How do we apply Trump's personality to a foreign policy well, document, so you look or, at, can, or, or can we? So you look, at, you look at Taiwan right now. Taiwan is currently encircled by the Chinese PLA, by their, the Chinese Navy. They're firing missiles over the island. And you look at our US Navy, and I'm sorry to say this, but as a, fire, a prior Seven Fleet sailor, we need to fix our Navy. Right. Because we're getting trained in wokeness, not training in how, what the military is for is to hurt people and break stuff. I do agree with me that, I, so if, if you reestablish that credible deterrence, yes. I think that solves a lot of yes. this. So back to the broad question of the new right. Are, are, we, are we or aren't we at the point where we can stop calling this the new right and just call it the right? Because at you know, I've actually me, been saying that a little like bit. Right. I've been saying that a little bit, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to do away with conservatism. And I say this as someone who's, you know, I'm, I'm a dad. I'm God-centered. My family's God-centered. We have so many great publications out there. Uh, we're doing human events. We're doing all all the new stuff. But we need to understand that. I think there's a broader section of people that need to hear that it is new. Okay. That it's still the new right. It's not, you know. Your granddad's, you know, we're going to go along to get along. We're going to do the pay to play. Now, how broad can it be? I mean, it, it's, obviously, it's not going to include Liz Cheney, but doesn't it have to include 
a, a Maliotakis or a Catco or, or Northeast Republicans who, who I'm, I'm transactional. I'm okay. transactional. You need, you need the person for the district, but at the same time, you've got to be on board with our agenda. You don't get to dictate our agenda. I think that makes sense. And I think, I think we came in right on time. I think we did. Look at that. Should we end on time, folks? What do you think? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new right. Thank you very much. Have a great day. God bless. Oh, I got this yeah. way. Yeah.